After completing his engineering degree, Andreas Hornig is now continuing his studies at the University of Stuttgart. It has one of Europe's biggest aviation and aerospace departments. This flight simulator gives him the chance to experience how strangely objects behave in zero gravity. The exciting thing for me is to go into areas where there are still limits, and to overstep them, and to prove it can be done. We're trying to find the next frontier, so we can push our own limits even further. He's dreaming of a moon mission. Honig is looking at ways of stationing a communication satellite at a point between the moon and the Earth, where it would require as little fuel as possible. Elaborate calculations are needed to find the exact path to that point. It's a big challenge, even for aerospace experts. It's a fascinating subject for me because it has a fairly broad scope. I can work with orbital mechanics and communications. I can lay out subsystems, which is very relevant to engineering. And I find the tasks quite exciting. With the aid of two glass marbles, Honig and a fellow student demonstrate how it works. The marbles attract the silver ball in the same way that the moon and the earth attract a satellite. At certain points, the gravitational pull of the two bodies balance each other out. There, a satellite could stay in place with little fuel and receive and transmit signals around the clock. It could steer robots building a lunar station, even at spots hard to access from Earth, like craters. The edge of the crater blocks the view from the side. But if I have a satellite looking down from above, I keep the connection. And that's what I want. I want to send a probe, a lander, or a robot into the crater and get the data back. The robot might have problems getting back out. So it's better to send the data up before something happens to it. The European Space Agency had planned to send a robot to the moon's south pole, where there are craters containing water ice. However, the lunar lander mission was suddenly halted, much to Hornig's disappointment. But the young visionary won't be so easily discouraged. The moon is so exciting, and the research area is so vast. I wouldn't turn away from it, and I don't think anyone should. Something will be done, whether in the next five years or ten years, it doesn't matter. A year ago, he developed the Constellation platform. It enables a network of volunteers connected through almost 10,000 home computers to help calculate the satellite's trajectory. With luck, they may soon find the optimal pathway and the best design for the satellite. I don't just want to know the satellite's trajectory. I'd like to find out how heavy it can be, so I can come up with an upper limit for its mass. And then of the, say, five tons that I calculate, one could be used for solar panels to provide energy for the subsystem. A few doors away, actual satellites are being built. The University of Stuttgart has teams working on almost every aspect of spaceflight in its well-equipped laboratories. Here, Andreas Hornig can find what he needs to make his vision a reality.